Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. <coughs> In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Eternal Father, you gave your incarnate Son the holy name of Jesus to be a sign of our salvation. Plant in every heart the love of the Savior of the world, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first reading is from Numbers, chapter 6, verses 22 to 27. The Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to Aaron and his sons, saying, Thus you shall bless the Israelites. You shall say to them, The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift upon his countenance upon you and give you peace. So they shall put my name on the Israelites, and I will bless them. We will now read responsibly by whole verse, Psalm 8. Psalm 8 can be found in your celebrate. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You whose glory is chanted above the heavens out of the mouths of infants and children, you have set up a fortress against your enemies to silence the foe and avenger. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars you have set in their courses. What are mere mortals that you should be mindful of them, human beings that you should care for them? Yet you have made them little less than divine. With glory and honor you crown them. You have made them rule over the works of your hands. You have put all things under their feet, all flocks and cattle, even the wild beasts of the field, the birds of the air, the fish of the sea, and whatever passes along the paths of the sea. 
O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. The second reading is from Galatians chapter 4, verses 4 through 7. When the fullness of time had come, God sent his Son, born of a woman, born under the law, in order to redeem those who were under the law, so that we might receive adoption as children. And because you are children, God has sent the Spirit of his Son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father, so you are no longer a slave, but a child. And if a child, then also an heir through God. Holy Gospel according to Luke, the second chapter. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all that they had heard and seen as it had been told them. After eight days had passed, it was time to circumcise the child, and he was called Jesus, the name given by the angel before he was conceived in the womb. The Gospel of the Lord. For those who didn't hear it earlier, we will not be having Bible study tomorrow in that the Cunninghams uh, are away. And uh, now indeed we have more people here by far than, than Buck Run. Last week Buck Run beat Frackville. There were 12 there and six here. So Mrs. Kraft asked, well what's the difference that Buck Run does so well? compared to us. And I said, it's all in the pastor. <laughs> they just have a better pastor in Buck Run, yeah, right? Early. Yeah, yeah early. he's still awake. Well, because you were probably up celebrating late into the night, I realize that I have only a few minutes to speak to you while you're still awake, or before I myself fall asleep. So let's begin with the technical stuff while our minds are still fresh. Today is called the name of Jesus. And what was Jesus' name? Jesus. Oh, yes, Jesus. His name was Jesus. They got it wrong in Buck Run, too. Yes. In the New Testament, there are 913 passages that use the name Jesus, and it comes to a total of 919 times, because some of the passages use his name twice. And that is for Jesus of Nazareth, our famous friend. Jesus was a name that was also used for other people at that time. In the New Testament alone, there are references to four different people who also were named Jesus. It was a name used by many people. <clears throat> but in the Gospels, we are told that this baby we celebrate was specifically assigned the name Jesus. Our Gospel reading today from Luke says that, quote, he was called Jesus the name given by the angel before he was conceived in the womb. So this naming was done at God's behest. This point is reinforced in the Gospel of Matthew as well. There we're told in chapter 1 that an angel appeared in a dream to Joseph, the fellow engaged to Mary. The angel said, quote, Mary will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, 
for he will save his people from their sins. He will save his people from their sins. How's that? Well, the name Jesus is based on two words that mean God saves. More specifically, Yahweh, God's name in the Old Testament, Yahweh saves. So right when little Jesus starts out in life, he is given a name with a meaning, a name that he will live out in terms of what he accomplishes, a name that he is to fulfill. Now, just as an aside, in the Old Testament, the name Joshua has the same meaning. Or when I was first meeting my students in the country of Lebanon 50 some years ago, one boy introduced himself to me by telling me that his first name, Isa, in Arabic means Jesus. And of course, Jesus is still used as a personal name, perhaps especially in Spanish language areas like Puerto Rico. In fact, you can even find some serious and some not so serious entries on the internet on the theme, why was a Jewish baby 2,000 years ago given a Puerto Rican name? Of course, it's the other way around. In any case, today's gospel reading makes a point in saying that Jesus was officially given his name at the proper time of his circumcision because of an angel's, think God's, instructions. Jesus is off to a good start. Yesterday here at church, we weren't thinking starts, we were thinking endings. For all of us, the end, the last day of 2022. But for one family based in Frackville, it was the end in a more specific way. That is, we had a funeral. The deceased was Carol Grabuski. Her maiden name was Shuey. She died shortly before Christmas on December 21st. How's that for holiday cheer? to lose your mother, sister, aunt, so close to the holidays. To make matters worse, Carol's husband died last year too, on February 28th. For Carol's funeral, I did something I don't remember ever doing before. We sang a Christmas song as our last hymn. Good Christian friends, rejoice. Why sing that? I began by observing how unpleasant and disappointing it must have been for Carol's family to lose her at Christmas. Yet in some ways, Christmas is an appropriate time to think about the death of a loved one. After all, in this season of Christmas, we celebrate the birth of Jesus and acknowledge his name, God saves. For example, in the famous Christmas hymn, Hark the Herald Angels Sing, we're told in the second stanza that Jesus was, quote, born that we no more may die. In Good Christian Friends Rejoice, the third stanza has the words, quote, now ye need not fear the grave. Jesus Christ was born to save. And in stanza two, he has opened heaven's door, and we are blessed forevermore. Yes, indeed, within the Christmas message of the coming of Jesus, there is an important word for us today. Christmas is a time to celebrate the birth of Jesus the Christ and his birth, life, death, and resurrection are what give us hope and comfort when we mark the death of a loved one. 
Jesus was born to save us, just as his name announces. Well, now today is New Year's Day. What does that mean? That we get to start over? We might wish. Yes, we can make our resolutions. We'll try to start over in some specific ways. But for the most part, our new life in 2023 carries over a lot of the old stuff from 2022. We still have our mortgages, our frozen pipes are still broken, our arthritis didn't go away at midnight, our unresolved issues and differences are still there, vile Vladimir is still killing Ukrainians, and even if we resolve to lose those extra 10 or 20 pounds, they didn't simply fall off when the clock struck 12. Our lives are more continuations than they are completely new beginnings. So if we needed a savior in 2022, we still need one in 2023. Carol's family lost both Father Joe and Mother Carol in 2022. And a flip of the calendar page doesn't reset the clock to some earlier, happier time. The joys and sorrows of life in the old year simply move into the new. In a way, I wish the start of a new year did wipe the slate clean, like the beginning of a new day in that famous Groundhog Day movie. In that movie, an arrogant, selfish weatherman wakes up to the same day, time and again, living that same day over and over again until he gets it right. He remembers each of those relived days and even accumulates skills such as the ability to play the piano. But no one else remembers his countless failures. So his failures, his sins, get wiped clean every day when he wakes up and he gets to start over again. That would be nice. But New Year's Day isn't like that. We may mark a new beginning in some ways, but the old problems carry over into the new year. And if we needed a savior in 2022, as I said, we certainly still need him in 2023. Thankfully, that's what we have in Jesus. And Matthew says, and as Jesus' name implies, Jesus will save his people from their sins, which allows us to move on with our present lives as forgiven sinners into a new year, even as we can look ahead in hope to the reality of being blessed forevermore when the doors of heaven are open to us, like those Christmas carols proclaim. Thanks be to God. Amen.
We confess our faith using the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is, seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. With wonder and thanksgiving for Christ coming into the world, we pray for the church, the life of the earth, and the whole human family. Holy God, you have given the church the holy name of Jesus, and in him we are your beloved children. Unite us in mission through the power of his spirit. Make us worthy of the name we bear, the name in which we pray. God of grace, renewing God, restore your glory to the earth. Awaken humanity to our kinship with all living things that depend on your provision. Teach us to care for the earth and safeguard its treasures for those who come after us. God of grace, Peacemaking God, reconcile the nations. Lead those in conflict into negotiation, and especially in areas of religious or ethnic strife. And acts of aggression and violence carried out in your name. God of grace. Delivering God, rescue our siblings in any danger, especially in communities where disaster and disease threaten. Move those in authority to respond with speed and compassion. We pray for the safety of first responders, health care workers, and all who protect us. God of grace. Healing God. Raise up any who are bowed down with illness or sorrow. Deepen our care and concern for one another. We lift to you all who are undergoing transition in relationships occupation, living situation, or health condition, especially those for whom we pray now. God of grace, saving God, redeem us and grant us eternal peace. We give thanks for the faithful be departed who now rest in your undying love, made known to us in Jesus our Emmanuel. God of grace, pondering the mystery of eternal love made flesh in Christ Jesus, we commend all for whom we pray to the mercy of God. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. <clears throat> it is indeed right and salutary that we should at all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to you, O Lord, Holy Father, through Christ our Lord. In the wonder of the mystery made flesh, 
you have opened the eyes of faith to a new and radiant vision of your glory, that beholding the God made visible, we may, we may be drawn to love the God whom we cannot see. And so with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn, In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin, do this in remembrance of me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. In blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Let us pray. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of those whom you have fed with one heavenly food. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen.